Hello, welcome to this new host of our video. My name's Alex. Today we're going to have a look at the UISP router. We had a look at the USB switch a little while ago. We we went over the hardware, getting it adopted to Hostify, and also how the mobile app works as well. So we're going to do exactly the same thing for the USB router here as well. The design is very, very similar. Um, it's that white, uh, sort of rounded cornered box design. It's got the uh, eight Ethernet ports in the front, all doing PoE. But this time it's a router, so there are some different software uh, characteristics and also and also the process for getting it adopted to host device is a little bit different, so we'll, we'll explore that now. So we're just going to go over the, the hardware now. On the front of the UISP router, there are 8 gigabit ports, all with 27 volts POE out. And on the very right-hand side, there's a 1 gig SFP port. On the back, there's a ground connector. And on the other side, the input from the transport power module. Looking at the transport power module, you've got a locking mechanism for the input connector. And then you connect the uh, cable in like that. And make sure it actually goes in all the way in the, until there's an audible click, otherwise the locking mechanism will actually engage with the port itself. So I'm just giving it a pull there to make sure that it actually is inside there. On the back of the UISP router, there's the barrel connector for the connection to the transport power module. The UISP router is ready to be adopted into Hostify, the white light there. I've got a connection into port 8, but this isn't actually quite correct. We'll come to that in a minute. Okay, I've got the UISP mobile app on my iPhone ready to go. It's found the UISP router via Bluetooth, and it's now connecting to it. It's testing the internet connection, and we'll see what happens next. Okay, it said no connection uh, detected, so I've actually done this wrong. The port should be in port 1, uh, that's, the, that's the default WAN port for the UISP router, so make sure that's done. So I've plugged into port 1, it's now testing the internet connection again. Setting up the device, adopting it to Hostify, just need to choose a site for it to go into. And there we go, it's all adopted to Hostify. Some of those segments were sped up um, to make it less tedious to view. But you can see there's some information here about when the unit was adopted to Hostify, CPU levels, IP addresses, and that sort of thing. There isn't much configuration that can be done from the UISP app on the iPhone, um, but most of it is, is supposed to be done on the desktop version. I'd imagine at some stage, you're actually getting ready to put more settings into the phone, the phone app. But you can see the ports. You can change the DH, you can turn off DHCP on or off. You can't do PPPE on the mobile app yet. But you can set PoE, the NAT level. There's lots of settings in there for the view, just a little bit limited compared to the desktop version of UISP. So now we've looked at the hardware and we've looked at getting it adopted to the Hostify with the uh, mobile app on UISP. We now look at the software uh, with, on the desktop version. So like the UISP switch, there's no local admin GUI for this router as well. Uh, it's, everything's handled through UISP, either through the mobile app on iOS or Android, or on the desktop version of UISP, which you can access uh, on any web browser from anywhere in the world. So like the UISP switch, we've got the um, pop-out banner on the, on the right-hand side with all the details. We've got the Ethernet ports, and we've got um, information about traffic. We've got the interfaces, POE um, details as well. Uh, we can set DHP servers, DHP leases, uh, look at DDNS. So there are some different options here because it's a router and not a ethernet switch one thing i explored was getting the was getting triple poe to work on the uisp router so changing the wan mode isn't as obvious as it as it looks like um so by default on the uisp router the wan port is port one however coming down to configuration there's nothing really here to specify about changing the wan apart from just turning dhp off or on on or off However, what you need to do is come down to Add Interface, and then go to Type, and then you can add either a VLAN, PPPoE, or Bridge. Because when you add a PPPoE connection, it's actually creating a virtual interface. So making the interface kind of makes sense on here. It does exactly the same thing on the Edge Router as well. When you make when you go through the wizard on Edge Router, you, you're creating a PPPoE uh, client, and it's actually just generating a new PPPoE 0 interface. So select PPPoE, and then you can say, OK, I want it on port 1, because there's only one WAN port on here. Then you can say uh, username and password. There's not much information like service name. Um, it's literally just a, an account and password for that. 
There are some larger screen options, so the stats, for example, um, pop out into a full screen view. So you can see the latency from the device to your ISP. And you can also see the CPU and the traffic on each port. Let's go back a second to router again. So we've got traffic, that's what we just looked at. Um, so, so we've got traffic and it opens up a, a full screen view. So let's move myself up there a second. So we've got all the ports listed. Um, the virtual interface for VLAN one as well, and we can see the traffic on each on each port on the router, latency stats, uh, throughput as well. So go back. There are some other full screen options as well, um, such as routing and firewall. So these blue sections, it will open up a full screen view view for you. So you've got routing. So there's OSPF as well. There's no BGP yet, which is interesting. Um, that's one thing they need to add at some point. And also go back again, and we've got settings and then firewall as well. So there's no real, real quick way of going in between these settings, but um, it's in there anyway. Uh, let's go add new, add new firewall rules. There seems to be quite a lot of options in there, so that's that's good for people that need to do that. And lastly, we'll just go into the settings here. Um, so we've got DHCP servers. We can add a new DHCP server, and it looks, looks pretty easy to do. And we can also manage the leases. I've got nothing plugged into the router at the moment, so there's no leases in there for me. We'll cut multicast and we can SSH uh, into the device if we need to. Like the other devices we've looked at before, um, there are a lot of options here. We've got logs, outages, MAC address tables. So MAC address tables is another full screen view. Um, so we've got one device, that's the upstream device. And we go back to manage and we can locate it. We can turn on maintenance mode. We can open up a terminal, terminal as well so we can log into the command line interface of the USB router if we're not locally connected to it and we can do stuff if we need to and there's also outages and we can also restart it if we need to okay hopefully this has provided a good overview of the USB router how to get adopted to hostify all the set all these um, features it, it supports within the USB controller hopefully at some point you will add BGP and some other more advanced uh, configuration settings that people are used to with the edge uh, edge router devices if you need any more information the blog post for this um, video will be in the video description. It's also available at hostify.com forward slash blog. Um, if you need any assistance with any of these devices or any Unify devices as well, contact Hostify at support at hostify.com or visit our website at hostify.com. We can also we also have a live chat feature. So anyone on the website or the support pages, we've got a live live chat option. And anyone anyone from the team will get back to you uh, and give you a hand with what you have problems with. Okay, thank you for watching this video. My name is Alex. And we'll see you again next time.